it belongs to my husband's grandfather, grandfather. So your husband's great, great grandfather. I didn't know how many greats, okay. but some greats. Uh -huh. He was in the Civil War and uh, he died in 1901. And where was he from? Uh, Valparaiso, Indiana. Well, this picture to me epitomizes what was happening in this part of the world in the Midwest in the last half of the 19th century. This was the breadbasket of the United States. And what we have here is a group of improved American Merino sheep owned by Isaiah McGinley, Valparaiso, Porter County, Indiana. And it's signed here, sketched from life by N.W. Wineland, Centerburg, Ohio. Wineland is only one of a number of Ohio artists that were doing this sort of drawing. It represents a style of folk art where, where these itinerant artists would go and see a prosperous farm, go up to the door, knock on the door and say, hey, I'm an artist. I can do a rendering of your home, your farm, your animals that you will have to commemorate your prosperity. What I love about this is the, just the fatness of the sheep. These sheep are so great. And you can see each one is numbered here. And the number refers to a registration that oh. the farmer was keeping for breeding purposes. Oh, okay. it's, it's a way to keep track of their breeding records. I didn't know that. I thought that was a number of the painting. This does show a little bit of, of age damage, and particularly these vertical and round places are from where a wooden board has uh -huh. burned through the paper uh -huh. on the back. Any idea what it's worth? No. I would say a good auction estimate for this charcoal and pen drawing is somewhere between four and six thousand dollars. Surprise you? Actually, yes. I I like it. And I like it better now. <laughs> <laughs> of course, well. My sister-in-law gave it to me. Her husband's uncle had had an antique store. What do you think it is? I have absolutely no idea. We've put guesses out that it's a portable spit tune or a snuff carrier. Now, it's glass, of course, and it's actually a rather olive green color which is typical of a certain kind of English glass, especially early English glass. This was blown by a very expert craftsman. The blowing starts here. You can see the open portion, and then it comes around and is twisted and braced up with another piece of glass. Now, what this is called is quilling and riggery, and it belongs to a late 18th, early 19th century technique. No kidding. It's that early. Wow. Now, the cover is probably tin, a uh, utilitarian metal. Now, the whole object itself is a utilitarian object, but I have not seen another one of this size maybe in 15 years. That style of all this white glass, like little dots in the green, that's generally referred to as Nailsy glass. Now, Nailsy was near Bristol in England, and they were in business in the late 18th century and the beginning of the 19th century, and their method of work was by coal. Their furnaces were coal furnaces. The object itself is what is referred to in England as a snuff mull. So oh, you were right. I was it, right. As a snuff flask, and they are so rare, and you can imagine they got broken constantly. And the reason it doesn't have any base on it is because it was meant to be stuck in the pocket or a saddlebag or something like that. I think this is worth $2,000 to $2,500, and I would have it insured at $3,000. Oh, my goodness. Now, what do you think of that? I think that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot more than I thought. If I owned it, I'd keep it. It's such one of those wonderful pieces. Now, I don't say that often.